Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. I wanna start by saying I know absolutely nothing about the Nebula 4000 lights. So I don't need to pronounce it right. Um, this one came from Hong Kong. I asked for a review unit. I know a lot of other people are getting it, like Eric Naso and uh, a whole bunch of other people are, are, are reviewing this right now. I think Matt, Matt's Macintosh, Matt Pierce, and some other people. Um, maybe in Jason Wingrove, I think, is getting a review in it, U unit in. Um, this is going to be just a stream of consciousness. This video is, I'm not going to have any really hard cuts in it. Um, I'm going to show you what I've got so far. So far, I've spent about three hours with it yesterday, and this is like day two. I haven't even started. I thought I'd kind of show you what I've done. Um, so first off, let me let me say that this 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 could change the way I film if it sets up right. Um, and I've seen some footage and I'll put a link to it in my blog post. There's this one guy I just saw, I had like 16 views on it out of Hong Kong and it was like silky smooth even as he was walking. Cause I've seen other people do it and they're walking and you can see that kind of movement, but he must have these settings perfectly aligned cause his footage just looked um, incredible. So if I can get that same type of uh, look as him without any image stabilization or anything like that, this really could change the way I film. So let's see, <clears throat> next up, I told you I'm not an expert. You know what I'll probably do is, this will be the first of many setup uh, videos as I get better at this, hopefully. Um, and I'll put those on my second YouTube channel. If you don't know, I've got like, I don't know, maybe 10,000 people that follow me on my second YouTube channel. And I usually put stuff up there that um, you guys might not like on this main channel. Just so you're aware, just go to my second channel. I'll probably have more videos about this. Um, so when it comes to a manual, it's quite lacking. Um, their translation, I'm getting, they seem to be out of Hong Kong even though their address says San Francisco, because uh, this was shipped from Hong Kong. And the the way things are written, are poorly written, and which is, you might think not think is a bad thing, but then I was watching uh, M over at Cheesy Cam, was talking about um, one of his videos, like when you get into the PID settings, like in the software, there, I guess there's a button, probably a big button that says, you know, would you like to go back to default settings? And if you do, from what I heard, I think I heard M say, is you can actually wipe the firmware. So you gotta be careful. I don't wanna wipe the firmware and have this thing basically be a brick and I can't bring it back to life or I have to ship it back to Hong Kong. This is a review unit, but I still wanna make this thing work. Um, let's see, the next thing I wanna talk about is, uh, there, in my blog post, I'll put a lot of different links to um, like their actual manual. Their manual is pretty good, and their video manual is like an hour long. Shows you the setting up of different cameras, like GoPro, the iPhone 6, and a bunch of other ones. First thing I tried to do with this one yesterday is instead of using the GH4 12 to 35 combo, I tried actually using my iPhone because I thought that would be a great place to start. It would be an easy one to do, but it wasn't. Um, well, I could balance it. Um, when I turned it on, the motors were set up, or the PID settings were set up in such a way where it would um, just rattle and shake all over the place because there was too much power, I'm guessing, going on. Again, I'm not an expert here. I've just, this is the stuff I've learned from watching other people's videos like M over Cheesy Cam has done a lot of work in this area. Definitely go check his channel out. Great stuff on this. He's actually making a very tiny um, three axis gimbal, which looks really cool. I like this idea better than having a pistol grip, but his idea that he's actually creating looks pretty darn cool. So, manuals kind of stinks. Um, their video manual is pretty good because you can actually see it. What I wish they wouldn't have is this piano track that just goes on for an hour, the same thing looping. And I wish you could actually hear the motors. They, they should have left the microphone on and not overdubbed it or replaced the track with the piano because I would love to hear when their motors were struggling. So let me just turn this on. I can. Maybe, let me turn the microphone towards it. Actually, it's not struggling. Let me see if I can put it down like that. Um, so it's not struggling this time. I've got it on a tripod, it'll probably struggle. Nope, not too bad. All right, actually I'm getting a little heavy. Let me go through all my notes first before I get into this. Um, what else did I wanna say? Um, try the iPhone first. Okay, so I don't have any sort of Android. I don't have any sort of Android um, 
device like a phone, tablet, or anything. So I couldn't use their Bluetooth Android combination with this, which I think was pretty cool because you could make adjustments in the field. That would be awesome. I don't know if you if, if guys, if I say something wrong or you have any suggestions, man, feel free to put comments down below because that will really help me. Because if you know if the, there's an actual app for this on the iPhone, let me know. That'd be great. But I downloaded, um, and I'll probably try to do some screenshots of this here in a minute, of the uh, simple BGC app. I think I've got the right firm software that matches up to this firmware. Um, it doesn't come with a micro USB cord, so I had to find one from an old phone, and it definitely worked. It attaches to the above the pan motor, so it's kind of weird. It would better than they put it down here, but anyway. Again, this is just going to be a stream of consciousness uh, video. This is not going to be heavily edited. I'm just going to do this all in one take. Uh, we talk about M over a cheesy cam. So right now, the Panasonic GH4 weighs in at 560 grams with the battery and an SD card. The lens weighs in at um, 305 grams. So that's a total weight here of 865 grams. So I'm below the 1,000 gram limit. Um, I like grams. Grams are great. I don't know why these us English folk use pounds and ounces. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Sorry, I see I would have cut that out um, if this was a normal video, but I'm just going to keep keep going here. It's okay. So what I'm going to do next is let's go ahead and I'll, let, I've got the unit turned off and let me show you some of the things that I'm dealing with in terms of uh, the way it's balanced. I'm going to only have this one camera right now, so I'm going to cut. All right, they talk about balancing it to the point where you can put, hold it 45 degree angle. You can see I don't have that right now or 45 degree angle. I don't have that right now. So what I'm going to do is this is the P, the pitch and tilt motor. This is the roll motor, and this is the yaw or pan motor. Um, so I actually labeled these because I know later when I get into the software, I'll probably be like, well, which one's which? The pan is pretty obvious because it's pan. So you got tilt, or I guess it's called pitch, and then roll, um, and then pan and yaw, or pan slash yaw, whatever. So you can see we're not balanced. <clears throat> So I've loosened up these four screws enough to just where I can bring it up and down and it'll actually stay in place. Um, so they kind of talk about in the manual how you're supposed to um, be able to leave that at a 45 degree angle or 45 degree angle. Unfortunately, like this eyepiece, which I can take off, which will balance up the balance or get rid of the balance a little bit. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just going over a cold. But all right, so it's not balanced this way or this way. So what I'm gonna do is move this up. So now it's, so you can probably hear my wife playing in the background. She's playing the piano. So right there, it's staying in a 45 degree angle. <clears throat> 45 degree angle. So what I'm gonna do is actually tighten this up because I had loosened that just a second ago. And now I'm off <laughs> just from tightening that. Jeez. Okay. Let's loosen that a little bit. Let's push the camera forward. Push it back. I mean, these are small, minor changes. Let's go ahead and tighten that. I'm going to just tighten it slightly. Let's go 45 degree angle. Let me turn it so you can see a little bit better. 45. And it doesn't quite stay this way. So that's pretty close. So let me play around with the pitch motor again. Actually, let's, uh, the roll is off a little bit. Let me see if I can slide the roll. <clears throat> it comes with a hex. I wish it uh, didn't have a hex. And it had, this is keyless. So I'm just going to loosen that one just a little bit. All right, so obviously not balanced. So let's go push this downward. See, it doesn't stay, so let's push this upward slightly. Let me rotate it. Actually, rotate it towards the light so you can see that better. Let's 
See right about there. All right, now we're gonna deal with the roll. So it looks like it's going that way. Let's face it towards you guys. And I'm gonna push the roll slightly that way. So the roll now will stay at 45 degree angles, but now the camera's off. So let's go back to this. I think what I'm gonna do is loosen this one and push this one. That's actually not too bad. Just by loosening that, did that. I'm gonna see if I can tighten that just enough. Seems like every time I tighten that, it goes off slightly. I'd say we're pretty close. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cheat for right now. I'm gonna bring out the center of gravity on the lens. So now I'm not at 12 millimeters, I'm more at like 19 millimeters on this lens. I'm just gonna cheat for right now. Now the roll seems to be off again. So let's, uh, now it's too much going that way. Let's pull it back. All right, so I'm just gonna tighten down one. I think I've got it pretty close. And just by the act of tightening, sometimes we'll screw it up again. That's why I wish this was keyless. And you, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I can barely get this wrench in um, because of the iOS. Um, and perhaps I put the uh, camera too close to the P pitch motor, which might be definitely the case. Let's go ahead and tighten this one. I'm trying to do this in such a way where you guys can see what I'm doing. I wish this was keyless. Like, M over Cheesy Cam is developing his own, but it's not a pistol grip, but it's a nice small one, and he's doing it without any sort of motors. Uh, I'm sorry, any sort of, uh, we need tools. So now I think I'm pretty well balanced. So if I turn this on, for some reason always, goes up, I could, you can actually feel the motor when you go into it. Um, so now we've got the pitch and the roll motors done, but the pan is not done. So if I were to take this, start to rotate like this, actually it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and uh, take this off. You want to make sure that I think this spins with the handle when you're doing it on a tripod because you don't want to, I guess there's some cables that go down inside of there and you don't want to get those all kimped up by twisting this so much. So hopefully. So now if I, wait, I think I still have this on. Let's turn this back off again, sorry. So this is off right now. And you can see, I'm looking for the um, the pan. And you can see it looks like it's wanting to go that way. All right, next up in this uh, is this, the sled adjustment. And unfortunately, <clears throat> you have to take all of the screws out and then you can slide it and then there's more, um, holes along the sled that you would go into. So to make this adjustment is a real pain. Um, and I wish this was toolless. So I could see never doing this out in the field because you would be losing these uh, tiny little hex screws like left and right. And that would not be cool. And I have a feeling inside the sled is the circuit board that controls all the PID, power settings, and all that stuff, the control board. So that control board, um, I don't, I'm sure there's circuitry inside of it and wires and solder and stuff like that. So when you move it, that uh, makes me a little nervous um, that I might be like dis. Uh, disconnecting or cutting a wire um, while I do this. So 
I don't know if that's the best design, but I don't know. The, so far, it just seems like it's pretty well built. Um, and it's, I don't know, maybe looks heavier than it actually is. It's not that terribly heavy. I'm on the last one here. Hope this is not like watching paint dry. But again, I wasn't promising any sort of great video out of this. But you can just see the amount of time it's taken me to unscrew all of these. And I've never done this before, so um, I don't know exactly how to counterbalance this, but it shouldn't be too hard. I've watched the video quite a few times. So right now, I kind of feel it. You can actually see what's happening. This is actually, the weight of this is coming down, which is, I don't know, like I said, not very cool. <laughs> um, so I think there's so much weight up above here, I'm going to have to counterbalance this by pulling this backwards. Um, and now I can probably still do this on the tripod, but I can bring this. How do you hold this? It's almost like you have to put one screw back in and you just have to guess. That kind of stinks. So there's one, two, three. That's all you get. There's only three adjustments. Okay. So that makes it easy. It's either <laughs> the far as four, the one, the, you only get three adjustments, which it, of course he doesn't talk about in the video at all. So I'm going to move it as far that direction as I can. I'll put one of these back in, which is not easy because you have to line it up. And again, I don't want to mangle anything on that circuit board that's being attached to the uh, pan motor. All right, you just can't put in one. You have to put in at least two screws. So now it's not balanced. I'm just going to temporarily try to balance it with. Like it's going to be a, almost at the. I have a third one in because the whole sled is tipping to one side. So you really have to put in. You do have to put in quite a few. So if you're a GH4 owner with the 12 to 35, um, it looks like, like I said, the sled only has three positions. It looks like it's going to be the middle position. Uh, let's put this one in a little bit because then that should help my balance out. I'm not going to tighten it all the way. All right. So get this kind of where it needs to be. Okay, that don't help. You need to put at least one on either side. So the way they do it in their video is they tilt it to a 45 degree angle this way. And you can see it's not spinning this way or this way. It's not spinning this way. It's not spinning that way. 45 degree angle this way. It's not spinning. So that is the correct one. So I'm gonna go ahead and button these up. All right, I want you guys to hear something. So I'm going to point the microphone as close as I can to this so you can actually maybe hear this. And let me rotate this so you can actually see me doing one. But when I tighten these, it actually makes a crunching sound. I don't know if you can hear the wind outside, but you might have been able to hear some of that crunching that's going on. And I don't know if that's just these being new threads, the way these are tapped, or if it's actually when it's going in, if it's hitting something like a circuit board or something like that, I have no idea. It probably isn't, but it just sounds like metal, crunching metal. I apologize if any of this is out of focus. This is, I'm just doing this on the fly here. <laughs> Um, just trying to share my experiences. So let's uh, see what we got here. So I could tilt this 45 degree angle and it stays. I could tilt it back. It stays. I can't tilt it this way because of the eyepiece. So that's as much as I can test in terms of the, I guess that's the pitch or yeah, the pitch or tilt. And now roll. Let's try a 45 degree angle. This I can do both ways. It stays and it stays. And then we've already kind of tested this, but if I rotate this 45 degrees, it stays and 
it stays. So now if we turn it on, let's straighten it out first before we turn it on. Find the on switch. It always seems to want to point up. I can always take it and click it one more like that. Now if I pick it up, uh, let me pan out for you guys, hold on. So if I rotate this way, bring it down, just help the motors out a little bit. And I have no idea what mode I'm in, but this is what I've got so far. Looks like it's in some sort of follow mode. But if I turn this way, it doesn't completely go in the direction of where I am, like right here. So let's, uh, since I don't know what mode I'm in, let's press it once. Give it a second. Since I'm so new to this, I'm not too sure what mode is for each one. We got the roll, and it seems to be following. Let's try hitting the switch twice. It doesn't make a different sound when you hit it twice, like do 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 do. Now this might be fault. This might be. I don't know what it is. So let's hit it three times. Still, it seems to make that same sound. I think this is the one that's locked. Yeah, it looks like it's locked. But it's locked down, so I don't... Maybe I've got to do the... Uh, what do they call the PID setting? Recalibrate? See, it's like... Whoa, what are you trying to do to me? Let's turn it. So what I'm gonna do at this point is just leave it where it is. Or I, I published the video now and I'll probably keep working on it and I'm gonna probably start getting into the software next. But I thought I'd put this out there since again, like there's a lot of people in the same boat as I am in terms of what's going on. I can see the screen actually fairly well. You can't flip the screen out going this direction, unfortunately on the, GH4. So I think I've got some PID settings I have to set up next um, because because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so again, if you guys have any suggestions, ideas, um, things I should try, if I'm holding the handle totally backwards, for instance, which I probably am. Actually, I think I am. <laughs> Maybe it's supposed to be actually this way. So. There's a ton of things I think I need to do and connect up the software to here, which I've already done once and it is working. There's a bunch of software you have to download in order to do that. And I'll put that on my blog post, what I've done in terms of software. So if you're following along and you just got one of these and maybe this video is helpful at least a little bit, um, you can at least see this mistakes I'm making, like it going the wrong direction, for instance. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.